China recently released plans to boost consumption and investment. This comes as the country just optimized its national COVID-19 policies, including reducing quarantine requirements, easing travel restrictions, and improving business conditions. So during this period of transformation, why do Chinese policymakers want to boost domestic demand? This is BitBee, the insight you need. I'm Wang Tianyu. First, the plan states that boosting domestic demand will help China pursue high-quality economic growth and cope with external risks and challenges. In other words, policymakers understand that domestic consumption and investment will play a more significant role in China's economy, and a weakening global economy will hurt Chinese exports. So increasing internal consumption will help to offset external risks. The guideline was jointly issued by the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party and the State Council. The guideline details several long-term goals for 2035. Among them is the establishment of a robust domestic demand system. To achieve that, the guideline underscores efforts to solve major problems including insufficient supply capacity and the large income gap between urban and rural residents. The guideline also specifies that China will increase cultural and tourism consumption and that measures will be taken to reduce the financial burden of raising kids, parenting, and education. Advanced technology is also crucial for promoting domestic demand. Therefore, the country will foster infrastructure investment in 5G, AI, and big data, and encourage the development of electric vehicles. China's closely watched housing market was also mentioned in the guideline. The government reiterated that houses are for living in, not speculation. As a result, citizens' reasonable demand for housing will be supported, and speculative investments will be curbed. According to the guideline, China's final consumption expenditure as a share of GDP has remained about 50% for over a decade. The new policy objectives align with China's dual circulation development paradigm, especially by emphasizing the internal production cycle. But that doesn't mean the country will ignore the external cycle. As the guideline states, China will always welcome foreign investors and will make more efforts to engage in global economic cooperation.